Hey everyone, if x squared minus 8x minus 20 equals 0, and y squared minus 12y plus 27 equals 0, what is the maximum possible value of x plus y? So the answer to this question is 19. Let's review it. So what are they really asking us for? Well, they're asking us for the maximum value that x plus y could be. So what that tells me is, well, if I want to maximize this thing, I need to know what the maximum value for x is and what the maximum value for y is. If I know what the highest possible value for each of them are, then adding them together will give me that highest possible sum. So I didn't pay attention to any of this yet. All I'm doing is just going over the general outline or the general goal of the problem. Because now we're going to figure out what that x and what that y could be. I see here that we have quadratic equations. We have x squared minus 8x minus 20 equals 0. And we also have y squared minus 12y plus 27 equals 0. So what I can do is I can go ahead and solve my equations, figure out what those highest values for x and y are, and then get to it. I'll know I'll have two answers for x and y because these are both equations of degree 2, which means you'll have two answers. They could be the same number, they could be unique to each other, or they could be complex. But remember, on the GRE, you're not dealing with complex numbers, you're only dealing with real numbers. So let's go ahead and apply our technique in factoring to get this done. So with that said, remember the goal is, what are the factors of negative 20 that add up to negative 8? And the, rate that we, the way that we'll get there will be and this is for my folks that haven't quite done this in a while. Let's factor, uh, let's factor 20. We have 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. So remember, it needs to multiply to negative 20. So one of these needs to be negative, whichever one we choose. And we need to know that whichever one is negative, it'll add with a positive one to get negative 8. That's right here. 2 and 10 have a difference of 8. So which one has to be negative? it's going to have to be the 10. Because a positive 2 minus 10 gives us negative 8. A positive 2 times negative 10 gives us negative 20. So there we are. We have x plus 2 and x minus 10. With that said, we can then split off our equations to see what those zeros are. So here, x would be negative 2. And here, x would be positive 10. So remember, we wanted the maximum possible value for x, and that, over here, is 10. Next, I'll do the same thing over here with y. I'll split it up, because remember, we want to see the factors of 27 that add to negative 12. So when you think about it, if I'm trying to find the factors of 27, a positive 27, that add up to a negative 12, that means that both of these factors are negative because a negative times a negative gives a positive. And whereas when you add two negatives, it remains negative. So briefly before you begin, just assess that, because when we write out our factors, there we are, that's it. And I hope you can see that if we have negative three and negative nine, that gives ne a positive 27, but a negative three and negative nine creates negative 12 when added. So we have y minus three and y minus nine. And just like last time, We'll split it up applying that zero product property, giving us y minus 3 equals 0, y equals 3. y minus 9 equals 0, y equals 9. Just like that. So there we go. Those are our maximum values. And therefore, my answer will be 10 plus 9, which gives 19. And that is why, my math party people, 19 is the answer. As always, if you have any questions, please ask. If you would like to review the written explanation, go ahead and do so. But just always make sure you're applying yourself to understand the concepts behind the problems.